It's November. I've got my bushcraft gear with me. I'm bushcrafting in November. It has been raining here in the UK. A lot. For weeks. Everything in the woods is soaking wet. Conventional theory and wisdom suggests I should still be able to take some materials from out here in these woods and with a little bit of careful planning, preparation and coaxing still be able to take an ember using those materials into flame. That's what the conventional wisdom and theory says. Let's find out in practice if I'm actually able to do that. If you're keen to expand and improve your ability to start fires when it's been raining, keep watching. Hi folks, I'm Craig Taylor and as always a huge thanks for joining me here on my YouTube channel, The Bushcraft Padawan. If you're not yet a subscriber, enjoy watching this video and want to improve your bushcraft skills then make sure you click on that red subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen at any point during this video so you don't miss out on future updates from my channel cheers let's get back to the reason i'm out in the woods today then i've been watching a video recently from paul kirtley in which he talks about five um, wet weather but fire bundles, I think the, the title of the video is five wet weather fire bundles. And he talks about five different uh, materials, five different um, plants, five different species that even when wet, you can very quickly, with uh, some skills that I'm going to cover in today's video, get them into a condition where once you've dropped an ember, they should be in a good enough condition, assuming you've done everything right, to be able to take the ember, wrap these materials around it in a bird's nest type of, um, of configuration as, as we've come to know it, and blow that into flame. Those five species in no particular order were bracken, I, I remember that one because I'm looking at it just at a camera shot there. There was bracken, there was honeysuckle, there was clematis, there was cleavers, gallimaperine, and um, grass. So bracken, honeysuckle, clematis, cleavers, and grass. Now I certainly know that honeysuckle and bracken are rife in this woodland that I'm in. I never remember seeing any tussock grass, but to be honest, I've never really looked for it, so I'm gonna go and have a look for that, but I've never seen any cleavers or uh, clematis in these woods. So I may not get around in this video to trying those two species out, but I'm certainly gonna have a go at the bracken, the honeysuckle, and if I can find any, the grass. As I've said earlier in the video, it's been soaking wet here recently. Everything appears to be um, soaking wet through. So let's, uh, let's, let's have a look at how I get on with taking these materials into flame. Let's think this through then. It's been raining, the materials are wet, the materials are going to need to be dried out. That's gonna take some time and it's gonna take some effort. It's gonna delay me getting my fire started. So why don't I think a little bit more cleverly about this and think to myself, what about if I can start to select materials that are already naturally being dried without me having to do anything. You'll notice that I've probably moved camera position and the reason being, <laughs> this side of my face is baking because there's a great sun trap coming in through the trees over there onto an area just out of camera shot here that I'm gonna share with you very, very shortly. The sun is already starting to dry that material out. I've passed loads of bracken on the way in here under the understory, north facing, not getting any sunlight it's gonna take much longer to dry out, either naturally, or I'm gonna to have to put more effort and time into drying it out. Time and effort that is gonna delay me from getting the fire started. So I'm gonna look for an area where the sun, where the natural elements are already starting to dry the material out. Now I'm about to select some bracken, but that same principle applies to whether I was looking for clematis, honeysuckle, grass, cleavers, or any material after it's been raining. The more work mother nature can, or the more help mother nature can provide me in drying the material, the less I have to do. So yes, I'm about to select some bracken, that same principle of selecting a sun trap to get it from is going to save you time. And don't just think about the sun drying things off, the wind, the breeze can also help to dry. So when I select this material, I'm not going to select the stuff that is lower down in the stack, even though it might be getting some sun, I'm going to select the stuff that's at the top of the pile of bracken because it's going to have been 
just checking the dog's not going to hit the tripod. I mean, it's got more chance, up oh, she did. There's more chance that it's going to have been um, subjected to the wind and the breeze and that can have helped to, uh, to start to drive any moisture off. So let me get my hands stuck into this bracken. There you go, you can now see what I was looking at, that beautiful sun trap, it's very very warm stood here, you might just be able to see Willow prancing around in the background, you may see a head or tail pop up very shortly. But if we look at this shot now, you'll see that there are elements, I think there, where the bracken is much darker, it is lower down, it is much darker than the bracken that's up here. It's still in the sun, but it's not getting the same effect of the wind on it as this up here. So I'm going to start to select this lighter, drier looking material rather than select the material at the bottom which is much darker giving a sign that it's holding a lot more moisture. It's quite interesting that this frond here that I'm holding, this side here where my hand is, nice and light, fairly dry to the touch but even the same frond this side, which is probably out of camera shot for you, is ever so subtly more in the shade than this side. It's the same frond, it's the same, you know, it's the same piece of, of bracken, but it's just slightly lower, slightly more north facing, and wow, that's amazing. The difference between touching that there with my left hand and this here with my right hand, it's almost like they're two different plants. So quite a significant difference between the two. So rather than take the whole thing out, I'm going to take out the parts that I know were dry. Rather than just think, yes, that whole frond is in the sun, therefore I'm going to take it, as I've just shown you, even the same frond could be subtly in or out of the sun. You'll notice I'm not taking the main stem or stalk of the bracken either. That's because even just as I even just looking at it now I can see it's much much darker holding a lot more moisture. So I'm just taking the actual fronds themselves as you can see here. Just taking those. I'm not actually going to take a lot. I'm getting shot. I'm not actually going to take a lot of these because I don't, <laughs> as ironic as it sounds, I don't actually want to start a fire today. I've brought a flask with me, I've brought some sandwiches. I've got no need to have a fire, but what I want to do is just to be able to blow them into flame to give me a sense of confidence that if I wanted to have a fire, if I'd got a bigger um, bird's nest and, and tinder and fuel, I could progress that to fire. But this is about taking material that has been soaking wet and getting it into flame. I'm gonna collect a few more of these leave them to dry and whilst I'm doing that I'm going to go look for some different types of material. I've got myself a, a respectable sized bundle there just to, just to test the contents out. Before I put this down in the sun to continue it drying off, I must admit it feels, feels quite dry now. If this felt much wetter, if I didn't have an option of, of the sun or the sun had only just started to dry it off, there's stuff that I can now do to help accelerate this drying off. Yes, I'm going to leave it in the sun whilst I go collect other materials, but before I do that, the drier I can put this in the sun, the better. So I could take these materials and I could just shake them, shake off any moisture, any little dew. Just by doing this, I'm, I'm naturally creating an airflow around it, which will help. I could shake it off. I could dab it on my clothes. I could, if I, if I had a shemag with me, I could perhaps, you know, rub it across that, um, or across a bandana, across a piece of cotton material to help dry off any moisture that was still on this, then I could lay it in the sun. So there's an element here at work, isn't there, of letting Mother Nature un undo the dampness herself that she's created, but also, we can also assist with that by you know, shaking it vigorously, rubbing it across our absorbent material to help dry it off. Having said that, there's, there's nothing coming off this. There's no moisture flicking off it. I'm looking at my jacket now, there's no sort of wet marks on it. So to the touch, it feels quite dry, but I'm still gonna lay it out in the sun, elevated off the ground, away from that damp layer of air on the ground, just to let the sun continue doing her good work whilst I go and collect some of the material.
Well, I haven't had to wander very far before I found myself some honeysuckle, Lonnie Lonicera periclinum. It's coming off nice and easily. Must admit, just to the touch, this feels much damper than the bracken. I think, well, from my personal experience, one of the disadvantages of this is because it grows up trees, it doesn't grow out in the open. <laughs> like bracken does therefore when there are, you know it's growing up trees there are other trees around that tree and it tends to be my experience at least you know in these woods more in the shade so it doesn't get that um, it doesn't get that same amount of, of help from the sun but equally you could argue maybe therefore it's a little bit more sheltered because it's in the woodland you never know it also grows, if you'll notice, it's, you know, there's the vine I'm taking from. It grows upright. So yes, whilst it may rain in the woods, clearly, it's got less chance of the water staying on it because the water will run off it because it's vertical as opposed to a bracken leaf, which you can imagine being like that, the rain lands on it, potential for it to stay on longer. So in just those few seconds I've been talking, I've been able to collect that very small amount there. I'm going to need more than that. I'm not going to bore you watching me peel it off though. I'm going to need more than that. But as I'm, as I'm taking this off, I can feel, I can feel to the touch. I can, you can kind of see it, but you can definitely get that confirmation when you touch it that it is much damper. So with this, there's nothing, it feels damp, but there's no surface moisture. There's nothing that I can see big globs of water on there. So what I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna stick it in my pockets of my trousers, my groin pockets, if you like, um, equally amongst there, so it's spread out in the hope that as I'm walking around and doing other, other tasks today, my body heat can help to drive any moisture from this. And then once I get in a sunny area again, I'll probably help to wear, it'll probably help. Oh, there goes the hound. It will probably help to get it in the sun as well. I shall see you shortly. Couple of decent handfuls there. As I mentioned, they're gonna go in those groin pockets respectfully. In the hope as I'm wandering around looking for some grass that my body heat from there can help to drive them off. Well that was a little bit disappointing. I've wandered around now for probably about 30 minutes or so in an area of, of these woods that I don't know and the reason I've gone to an area I don't know is the areas that I do know I know there's no tussock grass there. So I've come to the uh, the unexplored areas where I haven't been before. I'm not gonna wander much further because I'm, I don't know if you're able to hear, but a few minutes ago I could hear some forestry work taking place behind me. So I'm not gonna wander further in that direction and, and upset their day and possibly mine as well. So I've, um, I'm gonna take a wander back now, slightly different route back to where I was earlier today, hopefully being able to see some of those, um, some of that tussock grass on the way. But I've just got a sense that I'm not, I'm not going to find it here. I possibly need to be on the periphery of the woods, maybe farmland, maybe hedges, boundaries, pasture fields, that sort of thing. I suspect will give me a, a much better yield than wandering around in the woods, hoping to find some. So all I've got to go on at the moment is the honeysuckle that's still in my pockets and the bracken that's still back at where I started today, drying on that tree. If I can see, any gallium apron cleavers on the way back, I will certainly grab some, but again, it's just, I never remember seeing any in this area. I always, in my head, I tend to find them more in slightly urban areas, if I'm perfectly honest. There's, a, there's some wasteland close to where I live that's now been decimated and has been used as a housing estate, funny old thing. But loads of it around there, absolutely tons of it. I just don't tend to, I never recall really ever seeing any in the woods itself. It's always a slightly more urban areas where I tend to see it. But not to worry, let me go back. I've still got two things to have a go at, the bracken and the honeysuckle. I'll see you back there. There we go, there's that, that bird's nest there. I'm gonna make sure as I always do that the heart of this bird's nest There's some incredibly fine, dry, roughed up, powder-like material to help take that, that ember 
on to the next stage so I'm almost creating powder out of these ferns here tearing them up, ripping them up rubbing them together trying to make them as fine as I can that's in there I'm going to go for a piece of char cloth in the centre and I was going to use my ferro rod but actually you'll notice I'm in a bit of a sun trap so I'm going to go for the old Fresnel lens so even though it's November let's see if we can still have some success there we go wow look at that last day of November Perfect. There we have it folks. Ouch, time to drop that I think. <laughs> you there? Good. So that bracken there has been out in these woods for a long time. It is, it was, it will have been soaking wet. It was out in the open. However, good site selection in terms of looking somewhere where the sun had been shining onto it, coupled with selecting the material that was higher to allow the wind and any breeze to have helped dry it coupled with me then selecting the best pieces putting them in the sun elevated for I don't know it's probably up 45 minutes to an hour and then um, dropping that uh, if I didn't drop anything did I use the sun to ignite the char cloth blew it into flame so I'm confident there if I'd had a bigger bundle if I'd had some dry um, pencil lead thickness birch twigs or something like that on top of that I could have taken that to a fire so really pleased to have done that I've done it before in the spring when there's been a dew on bracken but never when the woods have been as soaking wet as they are at the moment so a real confidence booster there and hopefully you've picked something up there in terms of being able to select the right material and some tips for um, for helping you get to that stage in the best possible starting position let's have a look now at this honeysuckle there's one of the bundles and there's the other bundle these have been in my pocket now for a probably an hour I'd say give or take what's been interesting was about 15 minutes or so ago just as I selected that that bracken from the uh, the fallen tree where I'd stored it I checked this and I put my hand in my pocket and it felt really dry the outer of it was was was, was bone dry it was brilliant however I teased it apart a little and unsurprisingly the center the part that had not been in contact with my skin was I won't say it was damp, it didn't feel damp, it wasn't like a sponge damp, but it was damper than the outside. So what I then did was I basically turned this inside out, or turned it in on itself so that the outside was now the inner, the inner was now the outer, and put it back in my pocket. So I think a little tip there is, 
is yes, it would eventually completely dry out. However, in order to accelerate it, just putting it in your pocket and, and starting the stopwatch, it's probably not the most efficient way. Putting it in your pocket and then regularly turning it so it can get an even contact with your, uh, your body heat from your skin, you know, against your skin through your pocket is probably a more optimal way of doing that. This still feels, this, the outer of this, the outer of this still feels fairly damp. Um, so I'm gonna circulate it again. Not gonna initiate this just yet. I'm actually gonna go sit over there and have a little bit of lunch and let this continue to dry off in my pockets. But yeah, when it does come into contact with your body heat directly, it's definitely drying out via the pockets. Turning my attention to the honeysuckle now. I've roughed the inside of the honeysuckle, the inside of this bird's nest up. I've roughed it up, roughed it between my fingers, and buffed it up, it's powder-like now, so. Let me just drop a spark or two or three or four or five onto that char cloth. And let's try and have the same success that we had with the bracken. There we have it. There we had it. Probably didn't invert it for long enough. There we have it, folks. Certainly not consuming itself as quickly as it does when it is bone, bone, bone dry. Yeah, time to drop that. But there is certainly enough flames and heat that if I had a bigger bundle of honeysuckle, if I had the, the, the birch twigs, the, all of that stuff that I could put then on top of that, be very, very, still burning at my feet now, be very, very confident that, uh, that I'll be able to take that into flame, into a fire as well. So two out of two so far. Honeysuckle success, bracken success, both of them being outside here in the woods, in the elements, in all of this rain that we've had for the past few weeks now. And through careful selection and processing and, and all of that good stuff have been able to affect uh, the, the, or initiate a fire from them. A little disappointed that I didn't find any um, clematis, tussock grass or cleavers. However, now that I've got the bit between my teeth in terms of wet, we wet weather fire bundles, I shall certainly be keeping a keen eye out for them um, in the future. And if I can find any, I may even just sort of try and gather some and do an impromptu video there and then, because they may not always be in the woodland when I take my gear out with me. Something to think about. Well, folks, the day is creeping away from me. You may have noticed it, maybe you not, haven't, but it's a little dark now. That sun is starting to drop already. So I thought I would wrap things up for the day. Before I go anywhere, though, I've been thinking, we've just been having a sandwich and a, a flask of hot chocolate, and I've been thinking some really subtle, but I think important things I've discovered today. When I was selecting um, the honeysuckle from the tree, Normally I would just peel it off, but I find that I would peel it off. But on this occasion, I actually found that I was starting to move closer to the edge of the small cops of trees over there because my thinking was more likely to get sun and a breeze if I'm on the edge of a woodland. There were also some trees I went to where when I touched the bark of the tree, it was soaking wet. You know, the water was, was, was almost running down it, which meant that the the honeysuckle that was in contact with that was, would have been much wetter than the honeysuckle that is just hanging in the air, or it's still coiled around the tree, but it's not tight against the tree bark. So it was just interesting to, for, for me to sort of self-observe and reflect upon those really, really subtle, almost wouldn't, you wouldn't notice them, you wouldn't think about them if you were collecting in dry weather, but the fact that it's been so wet recently 
I was subconscious or maybe consciously just trying to eliminate all of those variables that would that would lessen my chances of success and therefore by lessening them I was increasing my chances of success. I don't think I've ever been as acutely aware of doing that as I have been today. So that was an interesting observation, as was, I've still got a bundle of it in my pocket, as was the um, putting the honeysuckle in my pocket dried it out, which I knew it would, I've done that before, but I'd never really taken the time to think about the fact that the inner part of that, that bundle there, that's not in contact, that needs to be circulated and peeled apart, turned inside out on itself and put back into the pocket. Again, possibly because in the past the, the honeysuckle I've collected has been has been dew damp at best, at best, or at worst, should I say, whereas today a lot of it was very, very wet as I was pulling it off the tree. So very happy to have been able to bring that into flame. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video as well. Let me know in the comments answers to the following. What's your, do you have a hint, tip or trick that you'd like to share with other people about wet weather fire starting when it comes to bundles of things. I'm not talking about feather sticks or fungi or anything like that, but when using a similar type material to what I've been using or looking for today, do you have any tips? Things like moving to the edge of a woodland so you can benefit from any breeze. Things like um, looking for what's been in the sun for the longest and selecting that. Those sorts of things I've talked about today. Do you have any hints or tips to share with me and anybody else that's watching this video? Do let me know in the comments below. Thank you for tuning in. I'm very conscious that I've been on and off here and not there for the past couple of months. Hopefully you'll understand why. But um, it, feels, it feels good to be back out and having to having spent, she's certainly very happy, having spent an entire day in the woods. So if you are a subscriber, thank you for sticking with me. If you're not and you're watching this for the first time, there is a red button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. If you click that roughly now, you will become a subscriber and you won't miss out on any future videos for me. Whatever you are, wherever you are, thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch. Cheers.